Hi, I'm Moira Lang. I'm a filmmaker and an amateur DJ. And today, I will show you my shelf. I used to read a lot more when I was younger, when I was still in school. Siguro along the way, kasi dumami rin yung ano natin, eh, diba? sources of entertainment. And I've always been a, a cinephile. I love reading, I love watching films, I love listening to music, I love making playlists. I, I used to read more and I want to get back to it. So when I travel, I pick up on my reading actually. Kasi I, I read on the plane, I read on the train. Pagka nasa Pilipinas ako, parang feeling ko minsan there's so much going on and I need the quiet and that peace of mind and that headspace to really get into a book. A lot of times, that's kind of a luxury for me. And so, nabawasan yung pagbabasa ko. But I really want to get back into it and at the same time, do more traveling. What genres of books do you read? So, like I said, I love music and I love making playlists. I make playlists for myself, but also for friends. So, pag may occasions like birthdays or or sometimes walang occasion, I just feel like I make a playlist around a certain mood. Tapos nun, I share it with friends who I think will appreciate it. So, in terms of reading, my taste in music also reflects my taste in books because it's quite eclectic. I have an almost equal amount of fiction and non-fiction books. I love reading biopics. I also love reading classics and also new titles. I, I read um, collections of short stories and I also read novels. In terms of genre, sa fiction, ang hirap i-pin down. Like my taste in music. Like if you look at some of my playlists, unpredictable yung trajectory ng playlist ko. You think it's mellow and then suddenly it becomes danceable. How has your taste in books evolved over time? Yung, yung taste ko in reading, yes, oh naman, nag-evolve. Kasi nung, like after yung children's books, I also got into reading yung mga detective series, Nancy Drew at saka Hardy Boys. <laughs> Parang natapos ko lahat yun. Also, once in a while, I would peek into my mom's romance pocket books. I was just curious. Parang yung covers kasi parang very inviting at romantic. And curious ako sa relationship ng men and women. Tapos, like, start to read the, st you know, yung beginning. And then, I would parang fast forward to sabi yung mga nag-kiss na sila. <laughs> and then, syempre, when I started school, the influence din yun ng mga teachers ko, especially in English and Filipino. And I started being exposed to books by Luol Hati Bautista, uh, like, Bata-Bata, Paano Ka Ginawa. Like, in English naman, yung books by Jane Austen. So, yun. And then, eventually, freshman year in college, I discovered a Russian writer, Fyodor Dostoevsky. And I fell in love with his books. In particular, The Brothers Karamazov and Crime and Punishment. Tapos nun, yun, nahilig na rin ako sa non-fiction. And, yun na nga, nagkaroon ng uh, balance between fiction and non-fiction. What motivates you to read? My motivation for reading and how I choose the books that I want to read is the same as my motivation for watching films and listening to songs. I want to feel something, whatever that emotion is, whether it's to be moved. And, and for me to be moved, there usually has to be an element of surprise. And I find that surprise can only come when there's subtlety. I, I prefer things that are not so much in your face. Yung slow, I, I really appreciate a slow build-up, but not too slow. <laughs> but I really appreciate a good build-up and powerful payoff, which for me translates to being moved. Gusto ko labanan yung feeling of indifference, yung parang manhid. You know, I mean, with all the stimuli around us, especially pag bumababad ako sa social media and I read um, news articles, so much is happening in the world right now and a lot of it is not good. Sometimes, nagkakaroon ako ng parang defense mechanism na nararamdaman ko na namamanhid na ako dun sa mga pangyayari. Sometimes, I want to be able to feel anger again or concern. Most of all, empathy. So, pag feel ko na yung emotions ko pagod na, parang nadadal na yung empathy ko, I turn to books. And I, I, I really, I really para search for that feeling na tatamaan pa rin ako and mararamdaman ko na masakit and I will feel for another person 
kahit na fictional person na yun. How has reading affected your work as a writer and filmmaker? I mentioned ano, wanting to be moved. When I write, that's also the tallest order that I set for myself. I want others to be moved by what I write. That takes a lot of patience and time on my part to tell a story in such a way that it is not too obvious or so obvious, alam ko na na walang mararamdaman yung audience. Kasi a mile away, they already expect what you want them to feel. And that's what I really carefully avoid. Maybe in the first draft, I allow myself to be more blunt. But as I revise, I keep in mind that I have to be subtle and gradual. I want the emotional payoff to come. And dun siya because it's unexpected, especially sa comedy. Kung halatang halata na gusto mo magpatawa, usually end up you know, flat on your face. And same with a tearjerker. Kung sa simula pa lang, eh, parang nagpapaawa ka na, magbibuild na ng defenses yung audience mo. The emotions that you want to elicit will not come. So yun, sa akin, I crave, I crave a, an emotional connection eh, to the things I watch, to the music I listen to, and to the books I read. What are your thoughts on book-to-film adaptations? Film adaptations of short stories or novels, di ba? They tend to be more successful when they're, when they're coming from short stories or short fiction. The filmmakers have room to, to expound and expand on ideas, emotions, characters. Example is Brokeback Mountain, which is based on a short story. The Robert Altman film Shortcuts, which is based on several short stories by Raymond Carver. So yun, I find those to be really satisfying. Sa novels, marami na rin mga magandang adaptation. Some of them by one of my favorite authors, Jane Austen. Minsan may hinahanap kay na kailangan nilang i-sacrifice para magkasya doon sa running time. The tendency, if you love a book so much and then you watch the film, there's a tendency to be let down eh. Being a filmmaker, I also understand why they made that choice. But as a reader, you know, you get disappointed. Uh, on the other hand, pagka naman nauna kong panoorin yung film bago, yung, bago ko basahin yung book, for me, parang mas maganda minsan yung ganung progression. Kasi, I watch a film, I fall in love with it, and the characters, and the story, and everything. And then, I turn to the book it was based on. And then, I, I, I find parang even more to love. So, para sa akin, mas gusto ko na panoorin muna yung pelikula, and then basahin yung book after. What book do you wish you could read again for the first time? Sex. The book by Madonna. I said that came out. I was really young. So for me, coming from a you know, major conservative background and sheltered upbringing, that was like a taboo subject. I saw that book in my one of my mentors, uh, uh, Ricky Lee, national, our national artist for film, Ricky Lee. Uh, me and my friends would hang out at Ricky's place, and he has one of the most amazing libraries and also collection of music and films. Ricky was maybe the first person I, I, I knew in, in the Philippines that had a copy of Madonna's sex book. And then I opened it and I like, parang, oh my God. Like, parang it was a, a new world for me. And it was liberating and happy. You know, it was nothing to be ashamed of or feel guilty about. So parang, it's something that I want to bring also to the work that I make on, 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 in film, uh, which is sex positivity. Yun yung feeling ko na kulang pa, up to now, even in 2024, I think kulang pa tayo sa sex positive works. I really want to celebrate ano, sex positivity. And that book was an eye-opener. What's your favorite quote from a book? Okay, so one of my favorite books is The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky, which was written or published in 1880. This version quote, Nowadays, almost all capable people are terribly afraid of being ridiculous and are miserable because of it. From The Brothers Karamazov. Yun, kasi parang feeling ko, habang tumatanda ako, yun yung, yun yung insight 
um, na natanggap ko sa sarili ko is that not to be afraid to be ridiculous. You let go of the self-consciousness as much as possible. It, baka hindi naman imposible na totally. So para sa akin, yeah, just uh, let go and um, be free. Have fun. What is one book you wish you had written? Siguro Bible kasi yung best-selling book of all time, di ba? <laughs> <laughs> Oo, di ba? Imagine ko na copyright mo yun. <laughs> One of the most fun na reads no, when, I, when I was in high school was yung ano, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. It's, it feels so light and inconsequential, but actually, it has a lot of important things to say about family, the way we choose our partners. I envy Jane Austen for her seemingly effortless but also dripping with style, you know, writing pro prowess. I really envy that. But at the same time, she talks about important things. Which book characters would you like to have a drink with? Gusto ko makasama sa Inuman, yung mga characters sa Noli Mitanghere, like Maria Clara, Padre Damaso, syempre si Ibarra, di ba? Tapos nun, pag-aawain ko sila, tapos nasabing ko kay Maria Clara, come on girl, hindi ka kailangang matali sa ano, sa pag-brainwash ng mga puritanical ano, and patriarchal thinking, uh, empowering women, and you know, parang giving them license to feel free in their own skin and in their bodies, di ba? Women own their bodies. So, parang, gusto ko, gusto ko si Maria Clara at si Padre Damaso. Tapos, ikaw call out si Padre Damaso. Hanggat mautal-utal na siya at hindi niya na ma-defend yung kanyang patriarchal at puritanical na pag-iisip. How has reading helped you? Uh, para sa akin, yung pinakamalaking naitulong ng pagbabasa is connected to what I do for a living, which is telling stories on film. Why? Because from reading and starting as a young child, no, reading and discovering the, the pleasures of reading, nasanay ako na mag-imagine, na mag-visualize places and characters and scenes. Nadala ko yun eh, sa, uh, hanggang sa nag-graduate ako sa school at naging filmmaker, naging screenwriter, naging producer. For me, when I read something, something clicks and then I start I start I start seeing pictures in my head. Pero na-train ako ng pagbabasa sa pag-visualize. So yun yung biggest impact niya because that's how I make my living is visualizing stories. If you could adapt a book into a film, what would it be? Because I have a, a book that I'm in love with, a novel, that I want to adapt into a film. I said a while ago na mas magandang source of short stories, but in this case, I'll make an exception. It's a book that has not been published yet. It's written by one of my favorite writers and people, a good friend, Jessica Safra. Uh, she wrote this book, finished writing this novel recently. Okay, it's a novel in English. It's set in the time of Jose Rizal's Barcada when they were in Paris. The group called Los Indios Bravos, which included Jose Rizal, the Luna Brothers, uh, Marcelo del Pilar, Paro de Tavera. It's, a, it's about our heroes as young people dreaming for a better country, no? Back home. But they're, they're in diaspora. They're in Paris. They're having fun. They party a lot. But they also, and they, you know, they fall in love. They break their hearts. But they also are in pain because there's a lot of injustice uh, happening in their home country, the Philippines. Lahat sila may mission na parang Ano yung pwede nilang maging contribution doon sa laban na yun? Um, and one particularly moving scene is when Jose Rizal reads to them his first draft of No Limitangere. And I found myself crying while reading that scene. When I read it, I mean, I wasn't even finished no, reading the book and I just was sure na uh, this has to be filmed. It has to be filmed. And I really want to produce, to be the one to produce this, this novel. 
Any book recommendations? It's called Tiu Ti Wong. Medyo tongue twister yung ano title eh. Tiu Ti Wong uh, and Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia to life, living, and art in Baguio, the Cordilleras, and beyond. So, this is a sort of an almanac about everything, arts, crafts, culture in the Cordillera region. And this was put together by a team of artists and writers from Baguio or from the Cordillera region. Mastermind nito is Kawayan de Guia, who's the son of Kidla Tahimik, our national artist for film, Kidla Tahimik. Every page, you know what I do every day is I, I just randomly open to a page and then read an entry and I learn something new about Baguio, about the artists of Baguio, or about some um, wood, the wood carving tradition in Ifugao, or the various festivals in different parts of the Cordilleras. Wala na tong, ano new copies sa uh, bookstores. Now this is Nick Joaquin, Nick Joaquin's Almanac for Manilenios. Like Teoti Wong, this is also a book that you can randomly open to any page and learn something new about Manila, about uh, you know the history of the city people that made the city what it is written in the inimitable and stylish style you know the stylish way of writing uh, of one of our national artists for literature nick joaquin i read this book during the pandemic during the lockdowns a friend sent this to me and this really kept me company you no know? and i read it so fast this is called ang nawawala by chuck berry pascual and it's a collection of short stories na lahat nangyari sa kanyang hometown. Bawat chapter is a complete short story that starts with the words, Ang Nawawala. A really fun and memorable main you know, uh, character protagonist. A trans woman who, who becomes a sort of a Sherlock Holmes in that small town. Halfway through the book, you realize, oh my God, they're connected. I really want to, um, to see uh, as a series and in fact me and the friend that sent this to me uh, the playwright uh, Joshua Limso we um, are developing the script the screen the, the scripts for a, for a series that based on these stories can you share any tips on building your bookshelf the thing about books, you don't read them all right away, diba? Parang gradually build your book collection. And ako, ang advice ko is that you ano, identify who among your friends are avid readers. Friends whose taste you like or, you, or, or, or matches your, your own. You know, once in a while, they would anyway, do book sales. Eh? And just be on the lookout. Uh, sales of secondhand books na owned by people na you relate to. Diba? That you have an affinity, that you, you feel an affinity towards. So, parang yun. And a lot of my books are actually secondhand, and they were unloaded by people with extensive collections and whose taste I look up to. Thank you for sharing your shelf. Do you have any messages? <laughs> parang almost every week, meron tayong favorite villain. Okay, siguro anger is, can be a healthy emotion that we can channel para makapromote ng social change. But, minsan sobra. And ang nakita ko na nababawasan is our empathy. Sa akin siguro, I would encourage people to think of villains and then try to put themselves in those villains' shoes. I think that there's no better way of doing that than reading. Kasi parang, you know, in, in, in really, really good books, even the villains have a story, have a why, you know. And, and you know, the best books are able to put you in the shoes of people that you may initially find repulsive, characters that you hate. If a book can do that, by all means, grab that book and read. Kasi I feel that kailangan natin ng empathy right now more than ever.